Hello everyone, Arxy here. Hope you are all doing well. Now I have had a lot of questions asked of me in the recent times about how to replace your textures in the game with some custom textures, particularly things like the line texture I've been using on Tahitian County, the custom corn texture we ended up using on Chilliwack, to name just a couple, the smooth roller texture as well, which FSG and I used on Hana Indiana. Now there is a huge amount of custom textures out there and available. I've got a list of 18 different ones uh, that I've shared down in the description. Bullet Bill has done some fantastic uh, canola, wheat, oat and barley textures. There's some wonderful oils. radish textures out there. There's some prefabs on the mod hub for better weeds, realistic plow textures, brighter terrain textures, just to name a few. So I thought we'd do a couple of videos to go through and show you how to do this. The first video we're going to do today is about how to replace the custom textures for all of your game saves. So of course this is a PC only option. We can't do that for console because you don't have access to your files and your game files to do this. Secondly, I do want to say this does require replacing some of the game files and the texture files for the base game. So if you're a little bit apprehensive of doing that, obviously first things first, make sure you back everything up. Uh, secondly, if you're not feeling comfortable, then I'd suggest not doing this. The second video I'm going to do is about how to replace textures in a map so you can do it specifically for a map rather than globally for your game saves. So where you might want to do that is the smooth roller texture from Permas Modding. Fantastic if you're using the big Mandaco roller, probably not the best if you're using an older Cambridge style roller on the Oaks. Likewise with the corn from Benji FS, that would be appropriate if you were doing a lot of maize silage but if you're still doing some big Midwestern corn farming you probably don't want to be going and replacing that texture because it just won't look right for what you're trying to do so those textures might just be a little bit better placed into a map anyhow let's get into it let's go and take a look so I'm going to use the lime as an example and I'm going to use bullet bills wheat texture as an example as well just as a couple of options to see how to go through and do those the first things you need to do is obviously download the mods. Now I've got all of the different custom texture mods that uh, I have found downloaded here on the right. And if we just have a look, you can see the wheat texture down the bottom here, wheat textures by Bullet Bill, as well as the lime textures prefab there. So let's just open up. We're going to start off with the wheat textures because it is just a little bit simpler. Now, pretty much every example that I have here has a readme file in it, which actually tells you how to go through and do things. So as I said, you open that there and Bullet Bill's got some fantastic little diagrams. Shows you exactly there what you need to copy and paste and where it needs to go. Now this is specifically for a map. Uh, we're going to go through and how to do it for your game files but it really is much the same file path. So we will go and have a look at that at what files there are included and where to find them. In the second example image here for crop destruction. So we will go through with a little bit of XML editing and show you how to do that. Now before we go on with XML editing, I typically use Notepad++, that is my editor of choice. Uh, you can just use the default Notepad which is often installed in Windows, uh, it's a little bit simple. Notepad++ makes it, makes it much easier to see the code and read it. Uh, there's plenty of other options out there as well, so you might have your favourite already set up. So we'll just take a look here in the other files that are included. So we've got all the DDS files, the diffuse files for the different distances or stages of growth and the level of distance for those. There's an I3D file which links all of these together as well as a distance. So that is what the wheat will look like when it's viewed at a distance where foliage isn't rendering. So a few different files that we need to extract and put into our game. So to be able to do that, you need to know where you're looking for the data in your install files. Now I've got Steam here, you can see program files, x86 Steam, Steam Apps Common, Farming Simulator 22 is the install file for Steam. Uh, I've also got the Giants version installed. If we click on there, you can see program files, x86 Farming Simulator 2022, Giants, and then we've got exactly the same folder structure that we did have for the Steam version, minus a couple of little steam folders in there as well so i run off the giants version of the game so we're going to go through and do the replacements in there let's just take a look here we've got the install instructions open down the bottom these are more described about how to adjust the textures on a map by map basis rather than for your default directory so 
we're going to go through and do this how we can replace these textures by default now i've shared i've saved a clip of the existing wheat textures so we can go and have a look at those once they are done but firstly let's go and find exactly where to find the wheat texture that we need to replace so here in the giants farm sim folder we're going to go to data foliage and there you can see all the different crop types that are in the map we're going to go down here to the wheat now you can see there's quite a lot more information in here than what we have when comparing our files but you can see we have the distance and the wheat i3d there's the wheat xml and then there's the different diffusers and level of detail so they're really what go and change the texture not so much the alpha and normal channels so we are just looking at replacing those now before i do anything else i am going to go in here i am going to make a copy here of this folder i'm going to copy that then i'm just very quickly going to go and put that on my desktop paste that there and now I have a backup of all those wheat files just in case something goes wrong and I need to default back to the standard ones wherever you save that just make sure it's somewhere you know what it is and why you've saved it there I'll go back through and I will put put a tag next to it I'll rename the folder to say original textures uh, just so I know that I can go through and replace it fortunately having two copies of the game installed I could go and copy it from the steam version and just replace it back in that way as well let's go in here I'm going to go into our wheat file and effectively all I'm going to go and do now is grab all of this information and just drag it and drop it in here and this should ask me do I want to replace 18 files and that'll be the 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 files there and there'll be 5 files in there so we'll just go and double check that we're going to continue we do have administrator privileges we'll do that for all that should go through and replace all of those and if we just have a look in there two four there's six six files we must have added one that wasn't already existing i'm assuming that would be why there might be a difference in number so that is all we needed to do to replace those textures here for the wheat now it did say if we wanted to change crop destruction we needed to go and find the maps fruit types xml so we can go and do that change in the global files if we wanted to do that. So under maps, here are all our XMLs and you can find the fruit types XML there. So we're just going to open that up. So there we go, we've got that open now and we're just going to see up the top here. We've already got our wheat at the top and you can see the line here about destruction that needs to be changed. And if we just have a look here, you can see down the bottom there where it changes. We've got filter start, goes to eight, filter end, 10 and state of 11 so I believe that allows for more crop destruction of the later stages of the stubble and things like that rather than just right from the start now the 4 and 8 I imagine and I'm only speculating here but I imagine this is at what growth stage the wheat can be destroyed so if you want to leave it at 4 so it can be destroyed when it's a smaller uh, plant then you can leave that there like that you won't be wrecking anything by not changing that so I'm going to go through I'm going to grab that little bit of code copy that into there place it into there and I am going to put that back to four I think that's what's going to happen we will go and find out a little bit of trial and error uh, again I haven't copied this that is something I should have done I should have backed up this fruit types xml so in fact I'm not going to save this I'm going to close it make a copy and then redo it again and there you go we've managed to make that save we've got a copy of this backed up on our desktop so we're just going to jump up in here hit save now we did have to run this in administrator mode to be able to make that change so with that done let's go and open the game up and have a look at the change to the textures now just to compare the results here are the textures when you first load into the base game of elm creek this is the wheat field that's ready to be harvested these are the default textures that you get and will now show you what they look like with the bullet bill textures might be hard to tell but they do look different if we compare them side by side you will notice that there is a little bit of a difference between the two textures very hard to tell if you were looking at this with a fresh eye i had to go back and double check that everything had worked and that there was a difference between the two textures but there certainly is so that is an example on how to do that now i'm just going to very quickly go and jump up into the top one harvest a little bit of the field and we should see that we get a different stubble texture and hopefully we get a different uh, we get the crop destruction as we run over the stubble we run along here and thresh and you can see the the different texture that we are getting on the back the different stubble texture 
which has come through, but we're also going to stop and back up because that will reveal the ground and stubble destruction a little bit clearer. So you can see a little bit hard to make out, but we do have a shorter uh, stubble there where the wheels have been. So that is what the crop destruction and changing those states of crop destruction has done. So that is how we've gone through and added bullet bills wheat textures into our map and this will be in every single map we have obviously wheat's not a texture that uh, changes really between countries or anything like that or the, between how you use it so uh, that's not a bad way to go through and do it rather than buy the map so we're going to go through now i'm going to show you how to do the line textures because there is a little bit more involved with those not too much difference uh, but we'll go through and have a look at them as well so taking a look here at how to install the line textures again there's some instructions in the download file this is a prefab that came from modhub and there's some instructions there which we've got open down the bottom basically select the variant you want into the folder in question and move the data folder to the game installation folder so not quite as detailed as what we've just seen from bullet bill but we're going to go in here and take a look now i've been using the grayish one we're going to go in there and basically it follows the data structure so what i could actually do is just drag and drop this file over here and it will copy everything in this data folder into that data folder and override it there but let's just have a look and see what it does so we've got the effects here fertilizer fill types and a lime and we've got a diffuse for that so that is all the way through here effects fertilizer fill types and lime and we've got the lime 8x4 diffuse what that one is I'm not exactly sure whether the effects for fertilizer whether that is the filling and loading out of a silo or auger or whether it is the fill plane that goes on top of a fertilizer spreader exactly what that is it could be the effect of the fertilizer being spread out the back the lime being spread out the back so that is one of them um, obviously there's a few more things that need to be done for the lime so go back we've looked at the data fill planes there but easier to find fill planes and then in under here we will find there will be a lime diffuse we come down here and find the owls so there is our lime diffuse and then if we go back into the data and maps and textures terrain ground we've got our spray lime diffuse and our lime diffuse so we'll go back and find exactly the same for those data maps textures terrain ground and in there we have the distance file goes into that folder so that line distance folder would replace that line distance diffuse and back underground the spray line diffuse come back under here and replace the spray line diffuse down there so that is all you need to do to replace the lime textures i am not going to do that because i have already done that and you've seen that in tahitian county and in the intro here in the video of exactly what it looks like but regardless of which ones I wanted to use whether it was the grayish or the yellowed the, the methodology is exactly the same so again I did go through I've got a folder on my desktop and there you go there's a folder with the four different diffuse files that were replaced going through and adding the lime in so I've just kept them there because I have a good idea on where exactly they need to go if I want to put them back but I'm quite enjoying having a slightly uh, paler grayer line texture than the rather bright, bright bright white that is in the default game and the process is very much the same for most of these again Benji FS for his maze pack we used on Chilliwack has installed instructions down here telling you exactly what to do with them as do pretty much every mod in here we go through and have a look some of the other custom soil textures which have come out of mod hub you can have a look there it will tell you exactly which textures that you need to replace in your data maps textures terrain ground folder so it is all pretty self-explanatory for what it is that you might want to do there's a couple here i've got which are a little bit more complicated uh the this one here is for the oilseed radish and if you have a look in the readme there is quite a lot it's obviously in german um i've used some translate there's quite a lot more needs to be done but this actually adds a whole lot more for oilseed radish than just changing how it looks you're able to cut it um, use it in forage harvesters and things like that so you can see forage harvester there converts oilseed radish to chaff so that's a little bit more detailed and i'll go through in a another video in a little bit about how to add these in if you just wanted to add it on a specific map like farm some guy and i did with hunter indiana 
we only used the smooth roller texture on that map specifically so if you want to find out how to do that and how to make it specific to a map then uh, stay tuned and I will go through and show you how to do that so I hope you found that useful any questions please let me know if there's anything I wasn't clear on or you just wanted some confirmation on how to do please leave a comment down below I will do my very very best to try and help you uh, I can't reiterate enough please do make backups of your files um, I don't want you to have to go through and reinstall the game to be able to restore those so do I can't stress it enough do take backups do take copies and make sure that you're confident that you're doing the right thing before you do it in all instances whenever I've come across these replacement textures or anything like that the files are all exactly the same so as long as you're overriding something that you've already backed up you should be good as gold so again thank you all very much for watching hope you've enjoyed that hope you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next one